watching along with us this morning. Good morning. Welcome. I see there's about eight people joining already. So uh, Jared and I are in these bubbles over on the side. So I thought this was kind of a fun way to just say hi. Merry Christmas. Almost Happy New Year. Everybody, we're glad that you're with us today. Um, but if you are here, let us know. Say hi in the comments. Tell us your favorite Christmas present. We're going to be talking about ours in just a few moments. And as you can see, a little countdown timer where we get started in about two and a half. Well, welcome. We're going to get started here. And so uh, thanks for joining in with us this morning. My name is Brian. I serve as Pastor Citrus. This is Jared, uh, our worship coordinator. So good morning. How you doing, Jared? Doing pretty good, Brian. How about yourself? Pretty good. So I um, hope you had a good Christmas. It, it, it's, it's only been a few days since we last saw each other, but it feels like a long time. So <laughs> how, how was your Christmas? Did you get, were there any presents? What was your favorite present that you received? Uh, favorite presents. Can I do two? Yeah. Okay. I have a long sleeve t-shirt. It says Jesus, but it's spelled out in a cross. Okay. Which I think is pretty cool. And I also have another guitar t-shirt. So gotta love guitar t-shirts. <laughs> yes. Did you get any, what about you, Brian? did you get any pedals, any more pedals for your guitar? No, we, we, we actually decided to get rid of a few because with quarantine, I got a few too many, so. <laughs> My understanding of guitarists is that you just accumulate pedals. Like, you can't help it. It just happens, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. They do very fun things, so. <laughs> nice. And for those who don't know, because I'm not a musician, the pedals, tell us what the pedals do. Like, where would we see those? Uh, pedals basically do different effects for guitar. They change the sound. So they can do everything from, say, full-on rock and roll to... Kind of more, if you're familiar with U2, more of the U2 kind of style things. So, nice. yeah, very range, very large range. I like it. Well, uh, 
you asked about my gift. Christy mentioned this is a very puffy coat. So it, it's actually, it's, it's cold in here, but I'm also hiding my Christmas gift. I'm very excited about this. Uh, I think this group will appreciate this a lot. So here, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jared already knows what's coming. All right. So this shirt is from Melanie and it says you're on mute because for all of you who joined in our live stream and maybe anytime outside of that too, we've just had a lot of fun with mutes and there's always something muted. And, and I saw this shirt and Melanie got it for me and, and I'm thrilled by it because, and, and my hope today is that we won't end up on mute. So um, as we're getting settling in, welcome everybody. Um, good morning to my mom in Virginia. Uh, thanks, Christy. I'm pretty excited about this shirt too. And uh, good morning, Stewart family. We've got a couple of, of questions. So I decided to kind of start this off as we're thinking, we're gonna be talking about New Year's today. And I wanted to start off by kind of peppering Jared with a couple of New Year's Eve trivia questions. And I've got one for all of you too. Um, so we'll do that one too. All right, so Jared, your first New Year's question. Are you ready for this? I think so. I all think right. So. What is the name of the location of the New Year's Eve ball drop? Name of the location. I believe Times Square in New York City. I'm not sure what building, but I believe Times Square. I need like a... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Congratulations, you got that one right. All right, so uh, your next one for us here is um, this one. And, and this one is more maybe subjective. What is the most popular New Year's resolution? What do you think the most popular New Year's resolution is in a standard uh, year? I think the one I hear the most is probably exercise or joining a gym. That's what I got. Exercise more. You know exactly. what? I, I want to see, and maybe y'all have something like about this too. You could comment. I want to see what people's top resolutions are going into 2021. And I wonder if they're going to be any different based off of like 2020. I'm going to resolve to be on mute less. That's just me. All right, so here's one for, for everyone online. If you're watching along, love for you to type this in the comments if you know this or your best guess. What is the diameter of the New Year's Eve ball? All right, so you know the ball, Jared mentioned, Times Square, the New Year's Eve ball. What is the diameter of the New Year's Eve ball? Let us know in the comments below. I've got the actual answer here. I almost showed you all. And uh, after the announcements, I'll come back with that. We'll see who who the winner is, and you will get the party noise to celebrate you. Um, so, Jared, I'll, I'll throw it to you first. You want to share some things that you've been working on? Yes. This past week, though Christmas Day has passed, on the Refresh podcast, I did the reading of the Christmas story from both John 1 and Luke 2. I decided to be a little fancy and put music to it as well, just to kind of help the story move along. So if you haven't already, please check that out. Absolutely. Um, I took a listen to it. I think it was maybe Christmas Eve as I was getting the trailer and driving over. Or I think it was the night before, maybe. And uh, it's phenomenal. And it just helped me enter into the story. So thanks for doing that. Uh, you can find today at citrus.org. You can find uh, the link there. But I want to share our upcoming sermon series. Uh, it's called Habits, and I've got a little video here. So before we come back, when we come back from that, I'll tell you the diameter of the New Year's Eve ball in Times Square. So pop your best guess in the comments there, and I'll let us know how close we are when we get back. So we had a couple of guesses. A couple people decided math is not what they want to do on, on Sunday morning. Uh, but the actual diameter is 12 feet. 12 feet. I thought it was bigger. Uh, but I'd like to give a shout out to Jacqueline Standeville uh, for guessing the right number. 
Uh, and so congratulations on that. I want to open us with a word of prayer as we get started this morning. So if, uh, you'll bow your heads at home with me, and we'll pray as we uh, enter into worship. Almighty God, you search our heart. You see every part of us. Lord, all of our desires are known to you, and every secret that we have that is hidden is known by you. So by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would uh, cleanse our hearts, that you would refresh our spirits, that you would prepare us for a new year. We ask all this in your holy name, and we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I want to invite you to worship together with us this morning, uh, whether you're at home uh, or wherever you are. Lift your voice, stand up, let's sing along together.
join me in prayer. Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity to come together and worship with one another online this morning. Lord, though the day of Christmas has passed, we're thankful for the gift you gave us long ago, and we're thankful for the gifts you continue to give us. And this morning, we pray that you give us an open heart and an open mind for the things that are still to come. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I appreciate that, Jared. Thank you for praying for us, and um, glad to be worshiping together with you all online, and glad to have you all sharing in the comments. Um, it's good to see you and be with you, and I hope you had a Merry Christmas. And we're in this in-between time where, where Christmas is, is over in terms of the holiday as we see it. We could get into a little conversation about the 12 days of Christmas, which is what we're actually in. But we're kind of in this in-between time in the world where it's it's kind of the world's on break. You know, we had Christmas. We're almost to New Year's. Um, and I always like this time of year because it's a chance to reflect on what was and what could be. And for me, it at least gives me a week where I can begin to think about what is coming up next for me. And one of the things I've been thinking about as I've been reflecting on this is this phrase, all things new. Uh, of course, it comes from Scripture. It was the title for our, our sermon for today. And 
there's there's so much with it. In one part, it's the idea that God is making all things new in the world. On a personal level, it's a reminder that in Christ Jesus, we are made new. Uh, We are uh, redeemed back to life. Uh, But it's also a reminder that in the world, God is still making all things new. And that the world as we see it is on a trajectory towards the newness that God is making. And so that gives me hope after a year like this year. Um, And the image that I have, I I wish I put it in. I didn't put it in the right spot, and I wish I could put it up on the screen, but perhaps you saw it. It was the image of a stump, and you could tell the stump was dead. There was nothing, nothing from it. Um, But in the image, there's a a little sprout, like three leaves that are just beginning to pop up right from the middle of it. And I resonate so much with that image of a stump and and a small plant just beginning to spring forth. You can just see the green over top of the gray. That's the dead stump. Uh, Because I think this is my hope and many of our hopes for 2021 is that we will begin to see these reemergences of life. And again, in a personal way, in a societal way, in in a world way, in in a cultural way, that we will begin to see new life springing up from where we've just felt like it's been a stump. So I really want to begin to just explore this morning how that happens and how that process of new life springing up happens and how all things are made new. Uh, And so to do that, what I want to invite us to do this morning is into a thing called the Wesleyan Covenant Renewal Service. You say, what? The Wesleyan Covenant Renewal Service. Uh, Let me give you some background on it. This is something that uh, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, put together. He started it back in 1775. Um, And he first introduced this covenant renewal service and the idea of it back then. And basically the purpose of it for all that fancy title was it was an annual time uh, of self-examination, of reflection, a time of rededicating ourselves and renewing our commitment to God. And so he would gather all the Methodist societies. uh, These were all the kind of bands and groups of Methodists back in the 1700s together and into the 1800s. And on this Sunday closest to the new year, they would gather together for this time of recommitting themselves to the Lord and to the work that God had called them to do. Um, and this wasn't just for people maybe like me as a pastor or Jared as, as, a, as our worship leader. It's not just for people who are working in the church. It was a service for everybody, for us to recommit to God in our daily lives, in our personal lives, to think back about what has been, to think about what will be. And I think it's still really important for something like this. Maybe you are someone who makes resolutions, uh, and that's great. I am one who loves resolutions. To me, any chance to start fresh is a great opportunity. I also know some people are thinking like, you know, it's not going to stick. I'm either going to do it or not. So some people don't make them. What I'm inviting us to this morning is something a little bit deeper than a resolution. It's a, a recommitment between the covenant between God and us. That's what I want to look at this morning is that idea. It's a reminder to us to put first our relationship with God through Jesus. And to do that, I want to look at a particular passage. It's one that I love so much, and it comes from John 15, 1 through 8. Now, this is Jesus speaking, and Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims away any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you'll be like a branch that's thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. 
And so this morning, I want to explore this this beloved passage, this favorite passage of mine. It, it, there's so much here, so much we could talk about, but I really want to just explore this vine and the branches metaphor. And maybe you caught the repetition. One thing that you can do as you're reading your Bible and as you're studying Scripture, if you want to kind of get a handle on what's happening, look for words that are repeated. If you see a word or phrase pop up a couple of times in the same passage, it means it's important. And for example, in this passage, the word remain, or as we saw, the phrase kind of opens up to that phrase, remain in me, that shows up 11 times in this passage. The call to produce fruit shows up seven times. So in, in eight verses, if we've got 11 remains and seven produce fruits, that's important. Like we can pay attention to that. Uh, and of course, the metaphor here is that uh, Jesus is the vine, right? And we are the branches. And I want you to imagine really just kind of a plant. And, and so the, what they would have probably seen, and, and perhaps as they were walking along the, the path or as they were going through somewhere, perhaps the place they were, it's more than likely that Jesus kind of just with, you know, with maybe a hand motion kind of pointed over and said, you know, just like that plant over there and used that visual metaphor to teach the disciples. And so most likely they would have seen a grapevine. So the vine is the central piece. And perhaps you've seen these at a farm or um, maybe you've seen them on a California wine tour. But the central vine grows up from the ground. And usually uh, it's the vines are actually kind of wrapped around the branches wrapped around wires or strings to help keep the grapes up off the ground and that's really the metaphor here it's, it's pretty basic but it's so deep that jesus is god's true vine so that central source point is jesus and attached to jesus are the branches are us are god's people and as we think about this i want to really think about these these two connection pieces the vine and the branches and how our life is our life happens because we remain in Jesus. And, and quite simply, if you, if you cut the branch from the vine, right, the branch dies because it can't get water and food and those kind of things. And so the essence here is that we must remain in Jesus, remain connected as our source of life. And maybe that sounds, maybe that sounds basic. Maybe that sounds like Christianity 101. But to me, as we end a year and begin a year, it's the right time for us to pause and really come back to those basic elements of our faith and say, to what extent am I remaining in Jesus? Where have I per perhaps disconnected? Or in what ways is God calling me to grow and produce fruit in the new year? And just reflecting on those questions can invite us into a really deep space of understanding what God wants to do in the year ahead. So when we think about this word covenant, remember I talked about the Wesleyan covenant renewal prayer. We're going to pray that prayer together uh, in a little bit, but I wanted to give you a, a, a basic understanding of it. And it mentions this word covenant. We don't have covenants as much now as they used to, but we know of the covenant of marriage where two people covenant uh, their lives to one another, and it's a, it's a serious commitment. We have um, perhaps covenants for our HOA or for our community neighborhood associations. Uh, we could maybe substitute the word contract, but contract takes away some of the relational aspect of a covenant because a covenant was really made between two people or between two groups of people. And it was about the rules, but it was mostly about how they shared life together. And in the covenant, we see that there's two sides. So on one side, on God's side, we have the one who promises to give us new life in Jesus. So in a covenant, each side makes promises to one another. And on God's side, the promise is to give us new life through Jesus. Jesus is the, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And every day, whether we're aware of it or not, God proves God's goodness and grace to us and shows us that the promises of God can be trusted and that they stand firm and that they endure from generation to generation. So on one side of the covenant, you have God and God's promises and commitments to humanity and to us. Now, a covenant takes two people. And so on the other side of the covenant, you find us. And I think this is a good reminder because there is a part that God upholds, but there's also a part that we can uphold. And we stand as those who promise, so our promise is to no longer live life 
for ourselves, but instead to only live for Jesus Christ because Jesus has loved us and given his life for us. Now there's more depth to it, but but you can see the, the different promises. On God's side, I think over here, yeah, on God's side, uh, the promise to send us new life in Jesus, and on our side, to dedicate our lives wholly and fully to God as we understand it and as that unfolds. So I think about that. In some years, those promises are more fruitful than others, right? <laughs> some years we can clearly say, I've seen God's promise and God's deliverance and God's compassion and God's goodness. And it makes it really easy for us to uphold our side of the promise, doesn't it? Uh, some years are fruitful, to put it in the language that John, that Jesus uses in the book of John. And some years don't feel quite as fruitful. Some are 2020s. I would say in the metaphor of the passage that Jesus gives, that this has been for many of us a year of pruning. A year of pruning. A time when we have felt cut back. And I'm not necessarily saying that God is the one who did this. Um, I'm certainly not saying that God is the one who did this pandemic or caused a disease or um, any of the, the hundreds of thousands of, of deaths and cases that we've seen. Um, but I certainly think that this has been for a year of pruning for us. Where things have been trimmed away. Obviously, the natural things that come to mind are we've been trimmed away from face-to-face -face relationships. Uh, we've been trimmed away from seeing each other's faces. We've been trimmed away from the usual gatherings. I mean, I could go on, but <laughs> you know that stuff as well as I do. Pruning is not always a bad thing. I would dare say that there have been things that we've experienced in this year, a lot of it bad, hard, and challenging. But there have also been ways where we have been pruned back, where we can say that has been helpful to us, right? And I think, for example, when I think about that, uh, that we have been kind of forced to focus more on those who are directly around us. Um, we have been forced to really think about the relationships we have and how to cultivate those. Uh, some, of the th some of the ways that we have done things in the past have been pruned back, and we have found um, that perhaps new ways of working or living or socializing can still have a lot of life. I'm not saying pruning is any fun, but I'm saying that there's some good things that can come from it. But I would also say that this has been a year where we have still seen fruit. Fruit. And I would define fruit as simply the good things of God. I have seen God, and I'm sure you have too, in ways that have been surprising uh, we have seen, I have seen people in our church, many of you who have grown in your trust of God because you had to, right? Because of a loss of a job. But you have seen God provide for you and through friends and family. And you've seen God meet you in some really desperate and dark places, perhaps the loss of a loved one. And while that is not necessarily good in the way we want, I would still call that fruit because fruit is seeing God at work in our lives, in the good and in the bad. So I've seen where we have had a deeper faith in God, a deeper trust, and a deeper reliance on God's provision. Uh, because for many of us who live here in the West, this is probably some of the first times in our lives where we have really come to the end of what we can provide for ourselves, our family, our friends, or our community. I mean, I've come to the, to the point, too, where there's just there's nothing else I can do, right? If, if God doesn't provide or come through, that's pretty much it. So I want us to remember that, that God producing fruit in us manifests itself in the good things that we can see, but some of the most profound fruit can be found in some of the hardest and the darkest times. And God doesn't produce the dark times. God doesn't produce the dry stumps in our life. God produces that green shoot of new life that comes up through it. And so if 2020 has been a year of pruning for us, this is an invitation for us to remember that in the life of a plant, pruning can be a helpful thing. When, plant, when plants and vines ramble and go long distances, they get further away from the central vine and it makes it harder to get um, water and nutrients. And so when you prune a tree or, or a bush or a fruit or a vegetable plant, you're bringing it in so it can have a stronger growth. Um, now I know that we are all hoping that 2021 is going to produce a lot, a lot of better things. But what we can't do is just decide as followers of Jesus that 2021 is going to be better. 
Uh, we can have our hope and that kind of thing. But I think that we, what I'm trying to say is we can't control our external things. Well, we can control the internal things. And so whatever happens in the next year, what I know that we can control is the extent to which we choose to remain in Jesus. That's the invitation that we have. The invitation of Jesus and John is that we would remain in Jesus and that Jesus' words would remain in you and in me. And I think that this really brings us to the heart of what it means to be a Christian and a follower of Jesus, is this uh, mutual indwelling. What a fun word that is. That it is Christ who dwells in you and it is you who dwells in Christ. That God lives in you and that your life is in God's life. And so the invitation for the new year, the part that we can do on our side of the promises, right, on our side of the promises, is that we can covenant once again to remain in Jesus. And I want to remind us again, just in case we're not sure, that no matter what 2021 looks like, uh, and no matter if some of the same challenges that you had in this year just carry over into a new year, that God still wants to produce fruit in you and through you. And if we have learned anything in this season um, of, of quarantining and distancing, it's that there are still some amazing things that God can do. If you feel um, trapped at home or, or stuck at home, or if you're still at home because you need to do that to protect yourself or others, God can still produce fruit in you and through you uh, as we remain in God. I think about the song that Jared led us in just a few moments ago. We could remain safe, and of course we are remaining safe. That takes on a new term. But God has called us higher and deeper. God has called us, in a sense, higher up in worship to God and deeper in our discipleship and our relationship to Jesus. And I think that's most of our invitation, not just this year, but every year, is to renew our commitment before we get into the new year to continue in that upward worship of God and then that downward digging in of really digging into the richness in our, in our disciplines and in our practices of following God. And so in just a moment, we're going to pray this covenant prayer together. Uh, and you can find a link to this if you just Google Wesley Covenant Prayer. Wesley Covenant Prayer, you can find a traditional version if that language suits you or a more contemporary version. Uh, we're going to use the more contemporary version. But it's got this phrase in it. And before we get to it, it always catches me off guard. Um, but I think it really speaks to this idea of of fruit and pruning and remaining close to God. It reminds us in the prayer that Jesus has many services or jobs or tasks to be done. And it says that some of those are easy and honorable, and some of those are difficult and disgraceful. Some of the things that Jesus will call you and I to are, they line up with our desires, they line up with our interests and our passions. But some of the things God calls us to they go the opposite way. They're contrary to both. It's not what we desire to do. It's not what we're interested in doing. It's not what we're passionate about doing. It says that in some, we can please both Christ and ourself, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. And I think this cuts to the core of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. That there are things that God has called us to do that that are wonderful and exciting, and we are, we are just as excited as God is about this mission or task, or about this person he's called us to share the good news with. But then there's some times where we just would rather avoid that person or that task or that job of, of maybe serving those people just doesn't fit with what we see ourselves doing. There's some times that in our relationship with Jesus, it can, it can not only honor Christ, but it can fill us up. But then there's other times where honoring Christ means denying ourselves. And so perhaps if you're looking for a way to renew your commitment into the new year, I would invite you to take this prayer that we're going to pray in a, <laughs> that's a lot of prayers. This prayer that we're going to pray in a moment and maybe work that into your devotional time. Begin your day with it. Uh, maybe end your day with it. Print it out, put it on a pocket-sized card, put it in your in your pocket, take a picture of it for your phone. And allow this prayer to draw you closer to the vine and to the source. Because my, my hope and my prayer and my trust is that the closer we remain to our source, the more we will begin to see all things made new in us 
no matter what is happening in the world around us. And that's what I really need in 2021. My guess is that that's what you are looking for also. Some fresh growth right in the center, right in our heart. So I want to invite us uh, to pray together. If you have a prayer request, love for you to share that in the comments. If it's more private, share it in Messenger to us. Um, I'm going to lead the covenant prayer for us together um, in just a moment. But I also want to mention, too, if you'd like to give to God's work through Citrus Church, you can do that by texting 84321, any amount, or today at citrus.org. Um, and so I'd like to invite us to pray. I'm going to go ahead and put the covenant prayer up here on the screen. And uh, it'll flow along. So for an example, kind of here's the first line. Um, I'll lead it. I'd love for you to join your voice and to, and to try it out. There's a phrase that says, let's just try it on together. And we'll try it on. I'll come back later on Facebook after the service, and I'll post it up there so you can print, download, or use it in that way. Uh, but let's pray together this morning. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing and put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine, and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. I'm going to have Jared lead us as we worship. I just invite you to use this moment to, to sing along or to just meet God in silence in the stillness of the moment and renew that covenant with the Lord this morning. Savior, in your presence we find our 
appreciate that song. I love that. Um, I, I, that's a new one for us. I don't think we've sung it before, have we? No. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's the word we need for this coming year. Like, you are God with us, Emmanuel. Um, well, I, I saw a couple of people share prayer requests. And so I want to encourage you all, as you see those on the comments, uh, feel free to take a moment and, and to lift those up in prayer. And in doing so, to kind of care for one another in this time where we all need each other together. Um, Jared mentioned at the beginning up front about the podcast, so take a listen to his reading of the Christmas story. Um, I think it'll fill you up. Uh, and as the podcast is called, it'll refresh you, right? Um, and then, of course, this coming Sunday, so January 3rd, January 3rd, first Sunday of the new year, will be in person and will be online 1030 a.m. I know we tried to change that around, but I think that just made things more confusing for people. <laughs> so, 10:30 uh, a.m. online, in person, uh, at Summer Lake Elementary, uh, or here on Facebook Live. Love to have you join with us in one of those there. Love to have you invite a friend. Uh, if you've got some friends who are trying to make some new habits and new commitments, this is the service to bring them to. Um, so, Jared, anything else you want to add in for our, our blessing? I believe that's all. I'd like to go ahead and congratulate us because we went a whole show without being stuck on mute at any point in time. <laughs> uh, but thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Let me offer a blessing for your week that's ahead of us. May our God, who establishes covenant relationships with those who seek to enter the kingdom, be with you always. And may Jesus Christ, who seals the new covenant with his blood on the cross, bring you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide you in your life now and forever. So may you go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen. We'll see you next week Amen. and online. Mm -hmm.